a very good evening to all of you. Now we have come to the closing ceremony of the Virtual Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health Conference 2020. The past few days have been packed with highly interactive academic and inspirational sessions. And I hope all of you have enjoyed being part of this memorable event. First and foremost, well, the APAC 2020 conference included a photography competition under the theme Reflections. I would like to invite Dr. Pamod Amarokor to, to announce the winners of the photography competition. The APEC 2020 conference photography competition had more than 100 submissions. So out of these 100 submissions, we had an eminent panel of judges consisting of uh, Dr. D. V. Abegunavardhana, Dr. I. S. Mantapiris, Mr. Henry Rajakaruna, and Mr. G. Hetiarachi, uh, who, who did the judging on 4th December. And it was, in fact, a very tough uh, judging session uh, because they had to make a decision out of 100 submissions, more than 100, in fact. So out of that uh, more than 100 submissions, they selected 25 of them, which uh, you all witnessed during the photography exhibition, the virtual exhibition that uh, we, we, uh, we webcasted during the breaks, uh, especially the tea and lunch breaks during the last uh, two days. So out of this 25 submissions, there were three winners and seven uh, merit awards. So let me first of all read out the names of the seven merit awards. The first merit award goes to the Hidden Faces of Public Health by Kaylin Tan J. A. The second merit award goes to the At the Market by Anupa De Silva. The third merit award goes to Curious and Observant by Hemaka Patiranagi. The next merit award goes to the COVID-19 pandemic has made buying and selling activities a little heavy by Trim Furman Pradhan. The next award goes to Family Jewelry by Hemaka Patiranagi. Next, Twin Power by Hemaka Patiranagi. And the final merit award goes to FGDs in, in the midst of a lockdown high risk zone by Azar Gauss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me now in, announce the winners of the photography competition of the APEC 2020 conference. The third place goes to One Moment in the Student's New Life by ARMV Atapattu. The second place goes to Warmoth Before the Storm by Ralph Dolaga. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the APEC 2020 photography competition is The Caged Fighter by Chrysantha Mendes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Amara Cohen. Now I would like to invite Professor Manoj Virasinghe, the Vice President of SLMA, to announce the winners of the Young Investigators Award. Okay, the Young Investigator Award winners for 2020. Uh, I would like to announce the Young Investigators for 2020 APAC. Uh, it is to end the Dong uh, sec, uh, and then uh, Malshani El Patirana, then uh, Indri Suvilo Swati, we have Anuji Gamage, Shatura Vijay Sundara, Ayesh Hetyarachi, Wilfred Mokkohu, J.M. Ganga Lalini, Alexandra Lord Sami and Chin Sin Siu. So we have those uh, uh, winners for the Young Investigators Award and congratulations for all of them.
Thank you, Professor Manoj. Now I would like to invite Professor Indika Karunathilaka, the conference chairperson, to deliver the Colombo statement on public health. Thank you. At the end of the APEC conference, it is customary to issue the conference statement highlighting the salient and the key messages from the conference. Colombo's statement on the contribution of schools of public health in capacity building for combating the COVID-19 pandemic and future pandemics. The Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health Conference in Colombo, Sri Lanka, held online December 5 to 9, 5 to 9, 2020. As the most influential international organizations in the field of public health, the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health, APEC, helps create an environment of mutually rewarding scientific research and collaboration that promotes advances in public health through the annual conference, regional workshops, and the Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health. The focus of the conference has been on reviewing the public health response to the pandemic and discussing how schools of public health can better prepare the graduates and guide research to respond to the future pandemics. APEC noted that control of pandemic has been more effective in the Asian region as strict public health measures have been implemented, including mask wearing, diagnosis and isolation of cases, control of mass gatherings, social distancing and lockdowns where needed. We believe that the success of these measures has reflected the public health training of the health workforce and the willingness of our citizens and governments to respond to health promotion messages. The APEC members noted that the COVID-19 pandemic had disrupted routine vaccination, MCH services, provision of food relief and nutrition to disadvantaged populations. In addition, the diagnosis and care of chronic diseases have been disrupted. The decline in routine vaccination for measles, polio, etc. is estimated to be up to 50% and this may result in major epidemics and child death in the future. The conference noted that the disruption to medical supplies for routine treatment of TB, HIV and other infectious diseases may increase antimicrobial resistance. In some countries, distribution of insecticide impregnated nets will increase malaria cases and may lead to spread of resistance strains. We urge public health ministries and schools of public health to take all possible measures to repair the damage resulting from COVID-19 pandemic. The conference noted in some ways in which digital transformation of health service provision, public health and medical education can be used to address some of these issues. We also noted important ethics issues in the treatment, prevention and vaccination against COVID-19. The Academic Consortium of Public Health urges schools of public health to embrace these technologies in teaching and research in response to these challenges. APAC will contribute to coordinate this development with its members. The statement was endorsed by the members of APAC gathered in Colombo and online on 9th December 2020. The statement will be published in the Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health and communicated to all our members. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to invite uh, Professor Wayun Lo, the President of the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health, who will be joining online to deliver the closing remarks. Uh, it has come to an end of our second day, uh, the two day conference. And as a conclusion, there is a great need for public health sector to evolve and play a very significant uh, uh, importance during this uh, pandemic. Uh, let this conference be a call to arms the public health uh, practitioners throughout the Asia-Pacific uh, region, uh, that in order to stay relevant, we need to evolve with the society, subtly adapting the new norm into the community. The Asia-Pacific region has comparatively low uh, COVID-19 figures today, uh, partly because countries have built uh, up their capacity and mechanism uh, by, emergence, uh, by emergency response over the years. 
as COVID-19 restrictions are gradually lifted across the countries and we emerge from months of isolation, it is important to note that we have passed the threshold of time required to establish the new norm. With the little bit of uh, reflection, planning and action, uh, we have come out of the COVID-19 experience with a more adaptive, uh, adaptive mindset. The COVID-19 experience have taught many people different things, but for almost all of us, it has shown that we can quickly change our daily uh, 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 routine. So ladies and gentlemen, the new task now, regardless of our in initial reactions to, the, to restore freedom after isolation, is to curb impulsive action and make a benefit of the experience by carefully developing new positive habits. At a society level, we have by necessity had to operate on an unusually level playing field in a sense that we all been in isolation together. That way we will all be in a better place in our new communities. As the pandemic rages on, it gives a chance to reimagine the world by tracing history, not forgetting it. This will help us to buffer the stock of new challenges and increase our sense of control over our lives to allow us to directly focus on life opportunities and possibilities. On behalf of APAC, I would like to express my profound and sincere gratitude to all participants for your presence at this conference. I hope that you have a fruitful learning from this event. I would like to also thank uh, our speakers, panelists and experts in public health for exchanging and expanding their knowledge as well as describing their experiences. To the University of Colombo and the Sri Lankan Medical Association and their committee members, including the IT support, my sincere appreciation and gratitude for your support in ensuring the success of this event. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I hope to see you all again next year at the APAC conference. Bye and thank you. Thank you, Madam. Now I would like to call upon Dr. Augustine Kusumayati, the President-elect of the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health to deliver the closing remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon and good evening everyone. Dear uh, participants of the APEC uh, Virtual Conference 2020, it's really a pleasure for us to have the opportunity to meet in this conference. We can meet old friends, we can share our ideas, our experience, and for sure, I am positive that we are all inspired by the, the discussions uh, happen during this conference. Um, for, uh, in this opportunity, let me uh, send my uh, deep, deep gratitude to the organizers of this conference to the um, uh, medical uh, faculty, University of Colombo, the um, Sri Lanka Medical Associations, and of course, to all the people of Sri Lanka who have very warm hospitality to all of us. I also thank uh, all participants and all uh, resource persons, um, experts and um, speakers that already make uh, this conference very cheerful and colorful. So I hope all of you are always in good health. May God always um, protect us and may God um, end as soon as possible the COVID pandemic that already changed our way of life. Um, and uh, I hope that next year, all of us have the opportunity to meet again in our conference that will be conducted in dual mode can be offline meeting and online meeting in Surabaya, hosted by Fakultas Kesehatan Masyarakat or Faculty of Public Health Universitas Erlangga, co-hosted by Faculty of Public Health Universitas Indonesia. So, take care and see you again next year. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Now I would like to invite Professor Bruce Maycock, the Secretary General of the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health to deliver the closing remarks. Thank you very much. When I think back on the last couple of days, I find my emotions have gone up and down. When Sir Michael told me that uh, the billionaires had become even more wealthy during the COVID, 
I couldn't help but be both sad and very angry. But when he said, look east, it really reinforced everything that I'd heard during this conference. I hope that when you come out of this conference, that your sense of hope and future capacity is increased. Because it's very clear that when you think about the way in which public health has adapted to the COVID crisis, the very best of examples are found when you look east. And that's a testament to the strength of the professional associations, the universities that train and work in the public health area. APAC during this year has not only presented this conference, but the Sri Lankan Medical Association and APAC have teamed up to also run webinars and members of our association have run numerous educational events. APAC has stood up to be counted as a very significant player during this period of crisis. And it's the participants in this conference, the participants who are watching, and the member institutions that enabled this to occur. As Secretary General of the only one of two Secretary Generals, in actual fact, ever to serve APAC, I know that Walter Patrick would be immensely proud of what he's seen evolve over this last two days and over this year in particular. So Indica, a personal note, please go and have some sleep. You're a man who has been working so hard for so long. And to those who are still working in the front line, please keep yourselves safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, before we move on to the next item, I think this needs to be said. To make this virtual conference a reality, there has been a very dedicated and hardworking team working backstage constantly. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to our conference organizing committee, including our very hardworking conference chair, Professor Indika Karuna Tilaka, Dr. Sumitra, Dr. Ashwini, Dr. Pamod, Utkarsha, Shamika, Rushmika, Zainab, Akalanka, and our ever ready team at SLMA. The team from the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, and our audio visual team who's done, who supported us immensely to make this a success. It is now time for the next organizing committee, or rather the next year's conference organizing committee to take center stage. I would like to call upon Professor Indika Karuna Tilaka to uh, take on the stage. Thank you. The APEC 2020 will now be leaving Sri Lanka like it did eight years ago in 2012 conference from the same very venue of BMICH and it will be carrying the wishes of all the Sri Lankans, everyone from here and wishing all the very best for the next conference organizers, Universitas Indonesia, and we are looking forward to a wonderful conference in next year in Surabaya. Now I would like to hand over the organizing team from the University of Surabaya for their presentation regarding the next year's conference. The team led by Professor Santi Martini and team from the University of Yalanga, or to you.
I would like to invite the organizing committee from Surabaya, the Universitas of Ayalanga, uh, to speak few words and to designate the official taking of the conference. Professor Santi Martini. Honorable APAC President, host of the 2020 APAC Sri Lanka, and ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you to every one of you for being here with us today. The highest appreciation and a big round of applause we designed it to the 2020 APA conference host led by Professor Indika Karuna Tilake for taking up the challenge to host the conference that in our opinion is a big success. We have apologized that the 2020 APAC conference planned to be held by Universitas Erlanga was deferred to 2021 due to the pandemic and some complication on our side. Countries worldwide are currently facing health problems due to the coronavirus disease 2019. COVID-19 is a disease causes best a new type of coronavirus, namely SARS-CoV-2. We are almost one year into the COVID-19 pandemic, and sadly, infection and death are accelerating in many parts of the world. In Indonesia, it's almost 600,000 confirmed cases, and often, often 18,000 people have died. On the other hand, we must continue to refine, learn, and adjust our response to pursue the new normal because COVID-19 will likely be with us for the foreseeable future. Although we are currently in pandemic situation that focus us to carry out our daily activities in different ways to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission. On the other hand, we have to look and consider from a more a positive of view that we are forced to implement digital technology in our daily life in a faster, smarter, and more massive way, including teaching learning process, providing health services such as telehealth or telemedicine, artificial intelligence, robotic, the internet of things, and implementing health promotion 4.0. Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Erlangga is calling the researchers, academic, government, health practitioners, NGO, health agency, and other related professionals to be engaged in discussing 
their best perspective and ideas to address this pandemic and its following impact in our 52nd Asia Pacific Consortium of Public Health Conference that will be held in Surabaya on October 26 till 28 in 2021. This is the right time to discuss what our best effort to tackle COVID-19. The fourth industrial revolution will benefit our sector and industry, but it will have a massive impact on healthcare. Medical advancement will come faster, better, and more effective medication will make it to patient more quickly and world-class healthcare will eventually be available to everyone. More people will have access to top quality healthcare at a lower price. It will also mean a healthier people overall, which means costs will invariably go down even further. The possible ways to solve these issues are developing health policy and laws, optimizing health global health finance and political commitment to make health a priority. To address the global health issues and barriers related to public health rules, communication between researchers, decision makers, health professionals, students and lecturers are needed. This will be point of view of the 52nd Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health Conference held in Surabaya on October 26 till 28, 2021. Our topic is challenge in enhancing public health policy and strategies during industrial revolution 4.0 era. We are from Universitas Erlangga welcome you all the members of APAC and other scholars in public health to join the event next year held in Surabaya, Indonesia with a hybrid method of the conference using offline and virtual or online platform. We are praying and hope that the pandemic COVID-19 will be overcome shortly. Hence, you all can experience Indonesian hospitality in a better atmosphere. Thank you very much and see you in Surabaya in 2021. Monggo Pinara, please welcome to Surabaya. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Now I would like to call upon Professor Indika Karunathilaka to deliver the closing remarks. Now we have come to the end of a conference that has exceeded all the expectations by all means. It was only, only five months ago when APAC advertised the call for bidding for the APAC hybrid online conference for the first time. And it was about four months ago when I announced in the SLMA council that the SLMA and the faculty has won the bidding to host the APAC conference in December. The response was one of anxiety and panic. However, none of them opposed. And what followed from there onwards was a whirlwind of activities within three months. And the result is there for everyone to witness. A conference with top level resource persons with the state of art technology combining everyone and covering the most required and necessary topics in public health and global health. And not only that, delivering a very strong message on the importance of prevention and return to the basic public health measures. How this was achieved? I thank all the resource persons who have supported us within very short time. All of them were top level experts in their own fields. Thank you very much. And a big thank you for the councils of Sri Lanka Medical Association and executive committee of APAC, especially President Prof. Ayun Law, Secretary General Prof. Bruce Maycock, Vice President Finance Prof. H. I. Chu, then Secretary General, Secretary 
was second vice president professor masna dalwi and from the secretariat fatin and all the executive com- committee members professor colin who has supported from the very beginning and we thank all of you for the support given the team from slma slma office and then everyone else who came together i would like to call upon all of you up stage now because we want to express to you a gratitude i thank all the participants who joined from sri lanka and all the participants from other countries bahuma stuti balabadun sahayogeta thank you very much kopkum tra tarima kasi sheshi hamsa anida arigato oshimasu big thank you for all of you and i thank our supporters ministry of health un agencies world bank especially who and the government of sri lanka sri lanka tourist board and the conventions bureau and bmich for organizing this beautiful conference this will never be a success with our it team led by my own colleague and friend dinil the institute of multimedia education and also support from the faculty of medicine and many experts who join from the faculty of aesthetics as well all of them join together to support us but nothing would be possible with that small team we have worked with manoj was always there to help can i invite on stage all of you for maybe one final photograph before we leave this conference venue ashwini riska and our team from the faculty and slma chamanika rishmika sign up vihagar pramod dinil henry and deshan to represent the ime utkarsha and the team from slma office if you can come up stage then everyone who is joined online can see who are the people who have worked day and night right throughout someone from the camera team also please come and from the slma office please come up stage everyone can need to see who has worked day and night to make the impossible possible please discussion if you please so this will be the farewell from sri lanka now who are in front of you are the team who made it possible some of who worked day and night so hard are not here but they are just representing this group yes everyone from slma you can see it's not a very large team but everyone worked so hard attention to detail was exemplary the work commitment i think last few days everyone worked around the clock thank you so much so so let's take a group photo and i invite all of you who have joined online now so to switch on your videos so that we can take one final group photo with everyone please join thank you and with that we declare dayak 2020 kalambu sri lanka closed